Welcome to CFC Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only James Lawrence Alcott. We are going to be talking about Chelsea and what the World Cup means to us as a club. But before I get into that, I need to just say, make sure that you subscribe to this man's channel. The link is in the description below. So the World Cup is nearly upon us. Excited? Yeah, very excited. I think it's... I, I, that's, it takes you back to being a kid each time, I think, the World Cup. So I think you kind of... It's easy to be kind of cynical about it all, but bottom line is it's like it's great, isn't it? Yeah, I, think. I agree. I agree. Like England are playing tonight, and it's a meaningless friendly, and and all of that, I, I completely concede is true. But with the World Cup on the horizon, I, I'm beginning to get a bit of cup fever. Yeah, yeah, and I think what's really interesting about the squads that are being put together is the fact that you're, I think you're starting to see, sometimes you need uh, fresh eyes on, on your team and your players and it can show where, where they are at in their careers, if they're in the squads or if they're not and, and what level they're at. And I think for, for Chelsea, for the Chelsea squad, I think it's quite telling what's happening with some of the players in terms of their chances for playing in the World Cup and what that might mean for their, for their future for Chelsea. Well, uh, do you know what, James, you touched on a really good point there, and this is something that I think is a real issue and something that is probably indicative of the season that we've had. Chelsea have no representative in the England setup. It must be a long time since that's been the case. Yeah, absolutely. I think obviously, you know, Terry and, and Ashley Cole, Wayne Bridge was there, wasn't he? Lampard. Lampard. I mean, we've had, we've had, Cole. yeah, Gary Cahill's been there for a long time. Yeah. But Cahill is now not in our starting eleven. I'd be surprised if he's at the club next season. Well, yeah, I think that's it. Isn't Despite it? the fact he's still club captain. He's still club captain. Yeah. Isn't he? I think with Gary Cahill, it'll be interesting to see if Southgate takes him or not. Um, I think. He, you can read a little bit too much into it, maybe, with the fact that he knows what he's getting with Gary Cahill. He knows, you know, he's been there time Beaten, and time probably. again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think he'll probably take him to the, to the World Cup, but I think if he doesn't, that is the end for him at, at Chelsea. I think that shows... Yeah. Because it, it does have a knock-on effect, I think. And I think what it also highlights is you've got Danny Drinkwater, you've got Ross Barkley in your, yeah. in your team as well, and, and neither of them have been asked to be in that squad. In an England squad that's midfield is lacking creativity and lacking real yeah. quality. Yeah, I mean, you're right about Drinkwater. Barkley, I still feel, would probably make it if he's, he hasn't been fit. Um, but saying that... He's barely played all season. Well, he hasn't really played all season. Mm. So you can't really take a player to a World Cup who hasn't really been fit all season, can you? No, no, very true. I think with Drinkwater, do you like he has played some games for you? You know, do you <laughs> think that the, do you think that he should be in the England squad? And if not, why is he a Chelsea player? I think they're two really good questions, both of which I think I disagree. I don't think he should be in the England squad. And I don't really think he should be a Chelsea player. I don't think that, you know, we signed Danny Drinkwater for 30 million quid in a market where you're getting nothing good for sub 50. Yeah. So, you know. That's the, incredible. That is the, the, the way of the world right now. Yeah. Like, no, Danny, I mean, Chelsea's midfield has looked a shambolic at a lot of times this season. And Danny Drinkwater still doesn't get a look in. Mm. So, no, he shouldn't be playing for England. And I think the players that Southgate has called up in that position are worthy of their call-up. I'm not quite sure how I think that midfield will sit, but I think Jack Wilshere is certainly ahead of him in the pecking order. I think Eric Dyer is certainly ahead of him in the pecking order. So England is not a fertile ground for Chelsea players. No. There are, we do have some good interest in this competition, though. Um, I think Kevin De Bruyne aside, we probably hold the jewel in the Belgian crown. Yeah, I think, I think if, when you see teams go and win tournaments, there is a guy that you know takes by the scruff of the neck. Zinedine Zidane for for one, and he's Hazard's hero. I think everyone's been. I think he's shown in the two titles that you've got recently that he can be the guy for you. Yeah. I think what's been disappointing with him is those lulls in between that have, that have, have, have arisen. Um, but yeah, he's got a, he's got a massive say in in the World Cup. This year. I completely agree. I think the thing with the thing with Eden Hazard is if he if he's on form. He's unplayable, he's mesmerising, he's dazzling, he's beautiful, he's just all of the brilliant words to describe a footballer. Mm. He has them in abundance. And it's quite frustrating because he's so good. He's so fat. Like, there are times when you see him, you know, he picks up the ball and he runs at fullback and he leaves a fullback standing. The fullback's terrified. And he'll do it again and he won't do it again for 70 minutes. You think, why are you not just like doing this constantly, constantly, constantly? Yeah. Like the fullback is so scared of him because he's got the beating of him and the bloke knows it. But 
it's, it can be frustrating, but on his day, he's incredible. And if the Belters get it right, actually, when you think De Bruyne, Lukaku's had a very good season for United, on top of like a lot, you know, a lot of good seasons scoring goals in the Premier League, Eden Hazard now, like, a glorious footballer. Yeah, the Belgians, the Belgians. I don't think you can call them dark horses anymore. They're not dark horses, are they? I think it's a massive tournament for, for Belgium, a massive tournament for Hazard as well. In terms of it affecting Chelsea players, yeah, uh, Chelsea fans, it's sorry. It's worrying. We need to Do time up to Do you want him to have it. a bad tournament or a good tournament? I want him to have a great tournament, but I want him to be signed up before the tournament starts. If he hasn't signed When I say a great tournament, tournament, Belgium are in the England group. So yeah. I mean a great tournament, but not quite as great as, as yeah, Raheem Sterling and Harry. But if he has a good, if he has a good tournament, he's gone, isn't he? If he's not signed his contract, if he's not signed his contract, I feel like he might be gone anyway. Even if he has a bad one, though. Do you think? Yeah, I mean nobody's going to judge. Nobody's going to judge. If, they, if, Bel if it all goes wrong for Belgium, they only play three games in the World Cup. Nobody's going to judge Eden Hazard on that. Everybody knows he's a brilliant player. They've just had a bad World Cup. True, but if you like El Hajduf, like would yeah, I know that does exist. <laughs> I know that that kind yeah, of thing so does if exist. He does have a great. Yeah, do you remember Manchester United bought Carol Poborski? Yes. Purely oh, off the back right, of a lob, yeah, back yeah, of a lob yeah. at uh, Clemson, Anfield. I think they did the same thing yeah. as well. So I think yeah. there's that as well. I bet that there will be Chelsea players that you buy based on a decent World Cup. It's the inflation of that. It well, there's always one player, player, isn't there? There's always one. Do you remember in 2014, I was out in Brazil, and I remember everybody was always James Rodriguez. Who? Where is he going to go? It's always going to be Madrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, it'd be interesting to see who that player is this time. Mm -hmm. um, the Spanish Chelsea have a huge Spanish contingent. Yeah. Well, they don't, it's actually. Bad. It's, it, that's yeah, it. they have a huge amount of Spaniards at the club. Mm. But, I mean, Marcus Alonso is rightfully being called up. Uh, I think Marcus Alonso is brilliant. I've had lots of debates with people on here. People don't. He's weirdly disliked, particularly with the really? lads who watch this channel. Yeah, I think uh, he proved a huge point against Barcelona in a way. I thought he was superb. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I think I think he's just a really good player. I like him, and uh, I'm glad. I think he's been rewarded justly by being called up to the Spanish team. Um, but more worryingly for Chelsea, Cesc Fabregas, Alvaro Morata, not called up, which is Pedro, as well. Pedro not called up, which is fair, yeah. right, correct, but worrying for us, isn't it? Do you think that's based on form, or, or for, certainly for two of those players, do you think it's just the end of the road? If, uh, well, it's certainly based on form. I think Pedro's coming towards the end. You know, he had a great season last year, but it felt like that was, you know, that was the zenith before the, you know, that was the last final peak in a glorious career. Yeah, yeah. Before it, mm. you know, he goes. I, d I don't think Pedro would have even expected to get in this this squad. I think Fabregas at the beginning of the season would. He was instrumental last year. He played a very good part of Chelsea in a different way. Uh, Conte used him perfectly and quite sparingly at times, but he really did contribute massively to our season. But this season's passed him by. Really has, it really has passed him by, and I've been a champion of Fabregas. I've rated him for years, but I can't see how he would get in a team that of aspirations to win a World Cup. Yeah, and I mean with Morata, I think you're seeing <sighs> you're seeing the problems with the form. I think look, if you if the World Cup started in November, he'd have been he'd have been in there. But I yeah. think yeah, I think you're seeing again that Costa is probably going to be their starting striker for, for Spain. <laughs> and painful that is. in the squad. I think that shows that is. That's the, I think that's what's interesting about this video, interesting about the World Cup, is that you, you can, you see it from a different perspective. How good really are these players, especially in these top teams, you know, Spain, Germany, England as well. If the players aren't getting in their squad for a team the size of Chelsea are trying to win leagues and titles, it's, uh, it's probably something that's a little bit worrying. Yeah, it's massive. It's a massive problem. Um, the only other real contender I think we have for lifting the World Cup trophy, the Jules Ramey, will be William. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess you've got N'Golo Kante in there as well, who, could, who might be able to... Kante, I suppose, I suppose Rudiger would have aspirations of lifting it, but I, I don't know. Who do you think, what Chelsea player can you see getting their hands on the trophy? James, I'm going to push you for an answer on that. What Chelsea player will get their hands on the World Cup at the end of July? I think it will be... I think it could be uh, William. I think it could be Brazil. Really? I think, I think that's the going forward. I think they're devastating. I think they've got good players at the back as well. Uh, I think it's Neymar's time. I think he needs to get fit quickly. But I think they've got Coutinho in there. 
I'm not even sure if William's going to start for them. They've got so many great players. Uh, William there. gets in, I'm sure of it. William, you certainly should. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click subscribe. And remember, go over to James Lawrence Allcott. His link is in the description. I'll see you on the next video. Go on, you blaze.